all, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Just Call Me Sarah. I am your host. I am Annie T. Broughton. And I tell you, we have an amazing program lined up for you tonight. We're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time. I have such a sweet, powerful young woman of God that's going to be on the set with me. Her name is Tammy Dormel Moore. She is the founder and president of Footprints in Africa. Oh my God, so I can't wait to talk to this young woman of God. She is doing so many wonderful things in the kingdom. And I think her motto is, we're committed to going the distance, amen, yes, praise God. And yes. so I think that's what we all need to do is be committed in what God put in our hearts to do. I do have a scripture that I wanna share. Um, it's lifted from Deuteronomy 11, 24 and 25, which is, I think is one of her favorite scriptures. And it says, um, every place where on, where on the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. There shall no man be able to stand before you. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that you shall tread upon as he has said unto you. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. So sweet woman of God, God bless mm -hmm. you. Thank you, I appreciate you having me. <laughs> I am super excited and so thankful to God to have you with me on Just Call Me Sarah. I heard about you through um, LaShawn yes. um, Edmonds, mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was on my show, and she was talking about her condition, lymphedema. Mm -hmm. And we had such a wonderful time, and she asked me, she said, well, have you heard of Tammy? And I said, no, <laughs> I have not. You know, <laughs> She said, you got to have her on your show. So again, thank you for, for being yes. with me today. Thank you. I appreciate you having me here. Yeah. So um, I read your motto, um, we're committed to going the distance. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Why is that your motto? Our tagline here at Footprints in Africa is going the distance for obvious reasons. We travel near and far in Africa, 54 countries within that one continent. And so by us being headquartered here in the States, it, you know, that's a great distance between the two. Yeah. And we want people to know that you don't have to be willing to travel to Africa to visit the motherland. All we need is your support and we'll go the distance. Wow. Yeah. So how did you come up with Footprints in Africa? That's the name of it, right? Yes, Foot ma'am. Okay. Footprints in Africa. In 2019, I traveled to Ethiopia. That was my first time going to Africa. Mm -hmm. um, it was a personal trip for me. It was bigger than just going out of the country. Um, the only place that I'd been where I actually took the shoes off that I had on when I stepped off the plane, because mm -hmm. I wanted to assure that the soles of my feet actually touched <laughs> the sole. Um, very overwhelming. Um, I've been to four countries four wow. continents, 28, 29 countries. Mm -hmm. And that's the only place where I felt such a connection um, when I arrived to Africa. Mixed with the locals, ate the food, got to know the people on a personal level. And here we are two years later and I still keep <laughs> in touch with a lot of them. Um, Ethiopia was the place where Footprints in Africa was birthed. I didn't know that at the time, of course. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until I got back to the States. Mm -hmm. And um, the plan was, the trip took place in October 2019. Mm -hmm. The plan was to go back in February of 2020 for my birthday. Because I had met some beautiful people and yeah. I wanted to celebrate and be there during Black History Month in February. <laughs> and plus be able to celebrate my birthday would be a win-win. Mm -hmm. um, I got a call from the local museum here in Greenville, Upcountry History Museum. They reached out to me and asked me would I help them curate the first black history exhibit. Oh, Because wow. I do photography as well as a yeah. hobby and I've done a few shows and so word has gotten around. And so I said, wow, that's such an honor. I'd be more than happy to actually <laughs> help you. you know, the first one here in the upstate, never yeah. been done before. Yeah, when is it? She said, well, the show kicks off February the 15th, mm -hmm. which is my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I said, wait a minute. That was a beautiful yeah, birthday, February yeah. the 15th. <laughs> and it runs until May 24th, mm -hmm. which is my mom's birthday. Wow. I said, okay, Lord, I hear you, I hear you. Yeah. 
but I'm supposed to be in Ethiopia for my birthday. You know, I've got these big plans. <laughs> um, reached out to my friends in Ethiopia, told them what was going on. And they told me, my sister, you have to stay in the States and do us proud. The yeah. first one in your, in your city, you have to stay and do us proud and come later. So the plan was to do the show in Greenville, which we did. Mm -hmm. I gave away tickets on social media. I went live. It wow. was a beautiful exhibit, beautiful. Wow. First time ever being done here in the upstate. Um, I was able to help curate that show. Mm -hmm. So that in itself was a blessing. Later that evening, I get a call from my friends in Ethiopia saying, hey, you know, we know that you were supposed to be here. We have a surprise for you, so we still need for you to come. Yeah. So in the meantime and in between time, I'm not one to hit my thumbs together. Um, we're doing the show, the exhibit at the museum. March 18th rolls around, mm -hmm. and um, the state of South Carolina shut down due to COVID. Aw. So I wasn't able to go back to Ethiopia, and the show was canceled. The mm -hmm. exhibit was canceled. So we ran from February the 15th through the 18th and it didn't do the duration through May. Long story short, I met a little girl while I was in Ethiopia that asked for the shoes on my feet. We were in the bush for three days. Oh um, rural terrain, rough, grass, rocks, dirt, you name it. Most of them were barefooted, mm. which is how I came up with the name Footprints in Africa. Yeah. Because I saw more footprints than I saw shoe prints. Oh my That's how God. we came up with the name. So, um, wait a minute. I want to stop you yes. just one second. When you shared that with me on the phone mm -hmm. one night, when we, I was like, I almost teared yeah. up because that was so touching mm -hmm. and so sentimental. Go ahead. Yeah. I just yeah. had to say no, that. No, no problem. <laughs> um, so imagine being there in the physical, actually seeing that hands-on, where you yeah. can actually touch and laugh and sing with these beautiful people. And you see these children running around with no shoes on. Mm. And so when you know you don't wear shoes for an extended period of time, your feet doesn't even have the proper shape. Right. Most of them are flat and just yeah. different things for not having shoes on. Mm -hmm. Things that we take for granted. Um, this one particular child, she asked me for the shoes I had on. I had on a pair of black Nike Air Max. Okay. And um, like most women, I have a ton of shoes. I have more than enough. Yeah. My closet is literally falling <laughs> in, you know. Um, and so we were walking back to the van and she was asking me for my shoes. And I know that the trip back to the van had to be a good four to five miles mm -hmm. because the driver, um, the local driver, he refused to go up in the bush. And you hear all these stories about what takes place in the bush. You yeah. know, the people don't have on clothing. They walk around, you know, um, very nomadic, mm -hmm. no sense of time. There's no clocks or anything like that. It's like something you would see on TV. Yeah. But I was in awe of it, you know. And, and now that I reflect back on it, they were in all of us, you know, because finally some people that look like us, yeah. but yet they, they speak differently. So you could see the kindred spirit, um, mm -hmm. the connection, although we didn't speak the same language. Yeah. So we're walking back to the van and um, the little girl, she's walking up, she speaks English. Okay. Um, broken, but well mm -hmm. enough for me to understand. Mm -hmm. And she asked for my shoes and I looked and I said, well, sweetheart, I can't give you my shoes. I'm thinking to myself, I got a long way to walk. Yeah. You guys are used to this. I'm not used to walking <laughs> in dirt tender. and grass. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be all cut up by the time we get back to the van. But I felt bad about it. Mm -hmm. Here I am telling a child no to a pair of shoes, not candy, you know, uh, we talk about shoes. Go. I'm telling a child no to a pair of shoes. <laughs> And I'm thinking, you know, if it wasn't <gasps> so far, and the, the other lady that I was with, she could see mm. the wheels turning, and she said, Tammy, don't do it. She said, you're not in a position to give your shoes. Yeah. She said, I can see the look on your face. Yeah. And so the child, she walked me back, and that thing st stuck with me. So when I got back to the <sighs> States, you know, I told my friend that I'd met in Ethiopia. Yeah. I said, when I do come back, I want to make certain we go back to that particular tribe, because mm -hmm. I visited eight tribes while I was there. Yeah. I said, I want to go back to that particular tribe. I want to make sure I see that little girl, and I want to give her the shoes that she asked for. And so I've already washed them. I put them over to the side. I've got them in a nice bag with a card in it and the whole nine. This is, these are her, her shoes. This is her gift. And um, oh, She could wear me. the same size? I mean, I'm just asking, how did you? I had no idea, and, and, <laughs> and for them, you know, I don't even think they look at it like that. It's just okay. something they can have on their feet. Wow. Um, and they're more accustomed to wearing slides than okay. anything. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, but the younger kids, they know about Nike and Jordan, Kobe Bryant. They know about stuff like they. The people come and give stuff, and, and they see the graphics on the T-shirts and, and different wow. things. Um, 
So although they're not connected like we are in the 21st century, mm -hmm. they, they have tidbits of information that keeps them somewhat in the loop. Okay. Somewhat, I you know, you. yeah, um, nowhere near like we are here in the States, but mm -hmm. they have an idea as to um, she has on some closed in shoes yeah. and they're, they're, they're nice. They're all black, you know, <laughs> um, long story short, we get back to the States. I tell my friend guy in Ethiopia that I want to take these particular shoes back to the young lady mm -hmm. and he's all for it. Of course, he <laughs> says, do you know which, which tribe? I said, I have pictures with the little girl. And so mm. he says, well, if you have pictures, he said, of course, it's a done deal. I said, okay. Well, we get shut down by the state of South Carolina due to COVID. And now, you know, it, it's growing throughout the entire um, country mm -hmm. at this point. And so everybody's shutting down. And I'm thinking what was going to be maybe a few weeks has now turned into, as we know, mm -hmm. two years now. Mm -hmm. And so um, right away, I told my friend, so you know what, instead of me sitting here hitting my thumbs together, not able to, to move about, because that's not in my nature, I'm a doer. <laughs> I said, um, I'll just collect more shoes. Yeah. Instead of taking back shoes for this one individual, we'll take back a lot of shoes. So I got on the phone with my family members and, and close friends, didn't use social media, mm -hmm. just family members and friends, and I told them what I had in mind. Within two weeks, I had over 100 pair of shoes. Wow, Within two weeks. God. that's awesome. And so that's what awesome. I've since done, now that we've turned this whole thing into a nonprofit, <laughs> an organization. Yeah. Because, um, you know, they say idle time is the devil's workshop. <laughs> and I don't do well sitting in idle. I have to be, you know, making things yeah. happen. It's just mm -hmm. in my nature. So we you know, came up with this idea to do this organization called Footprints in Africa. My very first project was Souls in Africa. So Souls, we, yeah. S O L E S. Yeah, like okay. the bottom of your shoes, yeah. soles. Uh -huh. um, so I got the community together, um, got some community partners, a couple of churches. Um, Changing Your Mind Ministries was one. Wow. Um, a local boutique over by Cherrydale. Yeah. Um, boutique 613. Mm -hmm. um, a full service day spa downtown Greenville in the West End historical area. Um, she was uh, another drop-off location. Mm -hmm. So we got these individuals involved and the community was able to bring new shoes. New shoes. Gently used, like new shoes. Yeah. Um, we didn't want anything that was, oh my God, these things are raggedy, you know. Anything <laughs> that you wouldn't put on, yeah. we're not taking them to our brothers and sisters in Africa. Right. So they had to be new or like new, gently used shoes. And the, we ran that for three months, okay. started in the spring, because you know, mm -hmm. everybody's doing spring cleaning. Yeah. So we said, let's start it in April. So April, May, and June, ran it for three months, collected a bunch of shoes for, the, you know, for Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it goes back to the little girl. <laughs> so because of that conversation with her, her wow. wanting a pair of shoes, it's now an annual project that we do every spring, and we run it for three months, called Souls for Africa. Wow. Yeah. We're gonna talk some more. Um, well, we're getting ready to go to a song by Disciple 5, and they're going to be singing, I Can't Even Walk. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm.
from now on when I'm in trouble on him I'm gonna call because if I I don't trust him I'd be less than a man you see I can't You know, I, uh, I love Disciple 5, and I love the way they sing. I love the way they minister in song. But that song right there, <laughs> I can't even walk without God holding my hand. And when I knew that Tammy was going to be with me today, and she was going to be talking about footprints in Africa and how those children there are walking <laughs> without shoes on their feet. I said, wow, that would be mm -hmm. such a powerful mm -hmm. song. I can't walk without God holding my hand. So tell us about, <laughs> I could talk to you all day. <laughs> I really you. could because you have such a gift I appreciate that. You do. It's like you went there to Africa for one thing, and God had a, a mission, mm -hmm. an assignment waiting for, for you and on you. So what, what, what are the other projects you're working on? First of all, let me just say it's important to be obedient. Yes. First of all. Yes. Because um, you're right. When I went to Ethiopia, that trip was personal for me. I'd always had some questions about Africa and what yeah. it was like, and I want to know on a personal level, over and beyond what we've been taught in school and what we see on TV. Yeah. So to go there and it turn into this, yes. you know, a whole mission, vision, purpose. Yes. Um, so I just want to say obedience is very important. And um, even when you don't know what it's gonna be or what the end results are gonna be, um, just trust the process. Um, Hold on one second. How many minutes we got? Okay. I think somebody need to hear what you just said. Would you just look in that camera right there and just share your heart for a few minutes on the obedience to God? My desire was to travel and explore on a personal level. Never in a thousand years did I think that it would have turned into an international nonprofit Jesus. that actually aids those in property stricken communities. Jesus. Um, so if you've got something that's tugging at your spirit, something that God is telling you to do, yes, obedience is golden. My God. You don't know how many people are relying on your obedience. Thank you, you Jesus. don't know how many folks um, you're standing the gap as an intercessor for just by being obedient. Yes. So I tell you to trust the process, even if you don't know what it looks like or what the end results will be. Yes. Because it's bigger than you. Trust oh and believe God. that it is bigger than you. Oh my God, thank you. You're thank welcome, you dear. so much for sharing that because that's the way I feel about my life. Mm -hmm. You know, just being obedient to yes. the Holy Spirit. Because if I had not been obedient to what the Holy Spirit instructed me to do, then I may not have ever met you, sweet woman. Exactly. Of God. <laughs> and giving so many of us a platform yeah, to God. share our mission and vision, you know? Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So, 
Uh, what else are you doing? I know you're doing so much. <laughs> right now we have a project called Life Gardens in Kenya, mm -hmm. which is near and dear to my heart. Um, Life Gardens provide a way for them to eat you know, at their gardens. Mm -hmm. So Footprints in Africa is committed to pro providing a garden to 12 schools. Mm -hmm. So that's 12 gardens, one for each school. And in doing so, I was told that's a, that's a big project and you're doing that during a pandemic. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take you a year to make that happen. Well, I'm proud to say that within seven months, excuse me, within three months, three months. we've done seven gardens. <laughs> Within three months, we've already done seven gardens. <laughs> um, I got an email on yesterday saying that yes. they're starting on number eight. <gasps> so it's not really into fruition yet, but we're starting on number eight. But seven actually have seeds in the ground. We're starting to see some greenery. Um, I was told that 12 gardens would feed 1,500 souls three meals a day. Mm. Listen, two of mm. the gardens is feeding well over 1,000. Now, mind you, they told me 12 would feed 1,500. Yeah. Two of the gardens feeding over 1,000. So I'm thinking, wait a minute, hold up a minute. <laughs> Did I misunderstand? They said, no, you didn't misunderstand. Because of the work that you're doing here in Kenya mm -hmm. with the schools, the attendance within the schools has picked up. Children are coming to school now. That's why you see the numbers being what they are. That's Thank why two Jesus. of your gardens is feeding over 1,000 people three meals a day. So imagine what 12 will do. I can't wait to get the final numbers. Right now we're at 3,000, I think 115, it's like 31 and something. Um, over 3,000 meals, I mean 3,000 people, three meals a day mm -hmm. off our gardens. Um, and people can get involved, the community can get involved. Um, you can sponsor a garden in its entirety. Mm -hmm. You can do it as an individual. You can do it as a business. Your sororities, fraternities, your, your girl groups, whatever the case <laughs> may be, your church can sponsor a garden. Um, I did one, a legacy garden for my, my ancestors. Mm -hmm. So I put their last name on it. So my ancestors have a legacy garden in Africa because I chose to sponsor. Wow. Um, and it's not a hefty fee. Or you can do seeds. You can donate $10, we'll see an entire garden. $10 will seed a garden. Wow. Yes, yeah, so we have that. It's called Life Gardens in Kenya. So it's just $10 or $10 per, but $10 can seed an entire? Uh, $10 can seed an entire garden. Wow. $100 provides the tools mm -hmm. and the seeds. Now $300 sponsors an entire project, which is what I did in my ancestor's name. Yeah. So $300 takes care of a trainer on the ground, tools, and the seeds for $300. An entire project, mind you, it's in a school, mm -hmm. so attendance has increased. There's no um, lunch fees and all that type of stuff because they have a garden now. Yeah. And we all know that, you know, our brothers and sisters in Africa know how to cultivate the land. It's yeah. in their DNA. They've been yeah. doing it for, for generations. <laughs> so that's not the problem. The problem is they don't plan enough to get them through the entire year. Mm -hmm. So when the drought comes, they don't have anything. So we teach them how to plant more than enough. Mm -hmm. And they say the reason why they haven't been doing that in the past is because the crop soils, you know, it, it spoils. And they're right, it does. Mm -hmm. So we said, well, why the ground is plentiful, why you're able to, to, to plant more than enough and actually mm -hmm. reap a, a full harvest, let's go ahead and do that. So they've been doing that and they take the, the excess, the excessive amount, and they start a small business. Oh my God. <laughs> so now they're entrepreneurs. They're making money, yes. and then they have more than enough. <laughs> more than enough. Because of our project called Life Gardens in Kenya. I absolutely love this project. I love it. Not only is it impactful, but it's also sustainable. Wow. So you do a one-time donation, and the project just continues. It continues. So we only got a, a couple of minutes left, so I want to ask, how can we get in contact, how could someone get in contact with you or, or What's the process of helping us to do what, you, what you're asking? We have several programs, projects, and initiatives. Okay. Our website is footprints, plural with an S, footprintsinafrica.org. Okay. You'll see all of our programs and projects. You can always make a donation. You can partner with us. You can start a work campaign. Follow us on social media. Yeah. Uh, where we share thought-provoking content on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. We also have an online store 
where everything in our store except our brand items comes directly from Africa. That's our way of supporting the small businesses in Africa. Um, like the jewelry I have on today, my mm -hmm. rings, which are brass and bone, come from Kenya, handmade. My earrings are solid brass from Kenya. Wow. My hair accessories are from Kenya. So everything on our website, with the exception of our brand items, comes from Africa. Wow. So we're promoting the skill craftsmanship and the traditional artisanal skills that have been passed down for generations. So it's bigger than just selling stuff. Well, sweet woman of God, I want to thank you for coming, to, for sharing this valuable uh, information with us. Mm -hmm. You are doing a phenomenal job. Thank you. And I just salute you. Thank you, love. I appreciate you. And glory for you. Yeah, I appreciate you. Yes, yes. Thank you for tuning in to Just Call Me Sarah. We pray, we pray that you were blessed and encouraged and inspired. Amen. God bless. Amen. <laughs>